Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah and I'm a flower farmer in East Yorkshire in the UK and I make lots of videos about my flower farming journey from sowing seeds to preparing flower beds and um, all the kind of stuff that goes along with flower farming so whether it's how-to videos or just cool little projects that we've got in between I like to document it all and put it out there on YouTube for you guys to watch because when I started out flower farming I didn't feel like there was a kind of free resource for me to watch somebody else doing what I wanted to do on YouTube so I want to take you along with my successes and failures on the flower farm so that you don't have to make those mistakes and you understand the reasons why I no longer do the things that I do or why I do the things that I do. So today what I wanted to talk to you about was bed prep. So bed prep has changed for me over the years and every year I kind of tweak it slightly to try and find the perfect way to prep beds ready for planting or um, just to amend those beds ready for the season ahead. So today I'm going to be focusing on dahlia beds in in particular and I'll tell you why um, that is in a moment. So basically when the season was over I would pull all of the plants out of the ground, roots and all, and I would rotivate the beds and weed them with a fork or whatever and um, just try and clear that and then I would keep the the field bare um, if I was doing it in autumn I would keep it bare until the following spring that I would plant into it so I've realized over the years that that's not the best way to do it especially since I've been more interested recently in regenerative forms of agriculture and how I can be doing things better and more sustainably so that evolved kind of to um, putting compost on the beds and not digging them so for the last couple of years two or three years I've been putting compost on the beds and then putting weed membrane over the top and then planting into that so that's really been the same way for probably three two three four years recently I've started to think about changing that up and doing it differently so I thought that adding the compost was a great thing to be doing it's adding organic matter but it's not really adding much goodness to the soil so I have recently decided that I'm going to be more proactive in putting um, cover crops on my fields over the winter I didn't actually manage to get any cover crops sown in autumn last year but this year I'm really hoping to get those cover crops in so that the um, the beds have got living roots in them all year round because plants give out exudates which are sugars and they make up to I think it's something like 40% of the sugars that they produce and actually for their own use they are as to be used as exudates in the soil so that the microbial population around the roots can feed upon those exudates and they can make an exchange in the root zone for minerals and things in exchange for the sugars so if I can keep those living roots in the ground all year round then the microbial life in the soils is going to stay happy all year round as well and then when it comes to springtime things aren't trying to recover once the roots get back into the ground things are already getting off to a good start as soon as they are in the ground and they can make those um, mycorrhizal um, connections and relationships and things so I was approached very kindly by Adam from the Soil Ecology Labor Laboratory or Soil Smiths and um, I have been gifted this stuff called the Goop and um, this is really cool it's made from inoculation grade compost so this isn't just your average bog standard compost it's absolutely teeming with um, microbiology nematodes protozoas fungi and things like that so um, they are able in their lab to keep a close eye on this stuff to make sure that it is full of all of the good stuff and it is brewed freshly and um, posted next day delivery so um, everything in here should still be alive and thriving ready for me to um, apply it onto my flower beds so that's exactly what I'm going to do today I am going to broad fork my beds and then I'm going to be applying this goop stuff um, and actually I had my soil tested for microbes uh, for the microbiology um, at the soil ecology laboratory 
and um, the results were quite poor to be honest and I was quite surprised because the soil did look really nice it kind of had a dark look to it it was kind of nice and friable um, but it just didn't really have any life in it it had a lot of um, my uh, bacterial content which wasn't a good thing um, I'll try and put the um, results up on the screen because I can't remember off by hand but I don't think that there was any fungi any nematodes or um, anything else that was beneficial um, but Adam did say to me that um, because of the way that the soil looked that it is um, looking like a good home for the microbiology so hopefully once the microbiology gets in there then it will be able to thrive because of the way that my soil looks and it looks like it has um, a good environment for the microbiology to live in so I'm going to be broad forking my flower beds and then I'm going to be applying the goop and I'm applying it to two of my dahlia beds uh, that are side by side and then I've got another two dahlia beds that are a little bit further down from the place where I'm putting the goop um, and we're going to see if, if we can compare the two over the seasons uh, over the season um, and then I'll probably get another uh, test done uh, of the microbiology to see whether um, that has improved after me um, applying this goop. So let's go and broad fork the beds and then we will apply the goop and we will see as the season progresses how this stuff is going to um, affect our flower beds. So if you want to know more about the goop then I definitely recommend going to the Soilsmiths website which is soilsmiths.co.uk. I'll put the link down in the description below and you can check those guys out there's loads and loads of information on the website and um, the guys are really helpful so I presume if you reach out to them they will answer all of your questions that you may have about the goop so getting on with the beds um, I'm not sure how the order of these videos is going to come out but I um, have just had a broad fork made by Rob and I'm using it on my flower beds for the first time I've done this bed already behind me so this is the um, hot off the press new broad fork so I'm, I've tried it already and it works quite well so I'm quite pleased with that so I'm just going to take up the weed membrane on that bed there and broad fork it and then it's time to apply the goop So the benefits of broad forking are that it aerates and decompacts the soil and the mechanism of using a broad fork should eventually mean that um, it will lose its job because it will improve the soil condition and compaction enough so that it doesn't need using anymore. So I'm hoping that this is going to be something that I'll be using for a few seasons and then after that it will make itself redundant. So we'll just have to see. Um, it's really nice to be able to do these um, videos on using the broad fork because I can make comparisons in year years to come um, to see how easy it is to slide the broad fork into the soil and um, how much easier it gets over the years as well. So if you want to know more about the broad fork then check out the video on building and using the broad fork and um, if it's not out already then it will be in the next couple of weeks. So that is both of those daily beds broad forked and the, even though I my beds are no dig and have been for a few years now um, that doesn't mean that the beds are full of life or amazing or full of nutrition um, because obviously it depends on the quality of compost that you put on there and how you treat the beds so um, hopefully the broad forking will help to 
um, relieve some compaction because even though these beds typically don't get walked on or maybe they get stepped on a little bit in the summer when we're picking flowers um, the action of the rain and the weed membrane on top of the beds um, definitely aids compaction on the flower beds so it's a good idea to um, use the broad fork if you think that you have a compacted um, a compacted flower bed to um, allow some air and um, water movement in those beds so that things don't get saturated and turn anaerobic. So eventually I'd like to get rid of the weed membrane because um, it would be nice to farm without it but at the moment I can't because of weed pressure but it would be nice in a few years time once I feel like I know what I'm doing um, to get rid of that um, weed membrane and do a few do some trials on a few beds just to see whether I can manage it without the weed membrane especially with the use of cover crops etc so what I've got here is a bucket of rainwater and I'm going to mix the goop into this bucket of water there isn't a specified amount of water that you put it into um, but I'm going to mix this whole bottle which is for 30 meters squared which is the um, square meterage of these two beds and I'm going to just use this watering can to apply it onto the flower beds and um, Adam warned me that I need to continuously um, stir this mixture in the watering can to make sure that um, the nematodes and uh, other heavier organisms don't sink down to the bottom of the watering can and they are suspended within the water column. So. Um, I'm going to take the water, uh, take the goop, mix it in with the rainwater and uh, watering can onto the beds. So there we have it, the goop has been applied to these flower beds and I'm hoping that the um, microorganisms are going to get to work on those dahlia beds and um, we will see a change in the microbial um, analysis of the soil in a few weeks time. So I'm just going to cover those back up and um, let them do their thing. So usually when bed prepping I have started cutting the plants off at the base rather than pulling the roots up and then that leaves that root matter to um, decay in the soil and feed the microorganisms for a little bit longer. Dead roots don't feed the microbiology exudates however so um, don't be fooled into thinking that leaving dead roots in the soil over winter is um, going to be great for the microbiology because it has to be living roots that are living in symbiosis with the microbiology that is going to benefit the soil in the long run. So I am leaving roots in the soil and then um, mulching with compost and in some cases I'm using the plant, I'm chopping up the plant debris and putting it back onto the flower beds and um, covering over with some compost and weed membrane. In some cases I use cardboard, corrugated cardboard and then um, compost on top. Um, it just depends on whether I have the, the cardboard spare, whether the, the bed is in a particularly bad condition and I just want to smother it a little bit more with a bit of cardboard. Um, and then just before planting I will usually give it a bit of a broad fork just to um, make sure that the soil isn't too compacted. Um, so that is how I'm currently prepping beds but this year if we can get a successful um, round of cover crops sown in the autumn then things will change from then on but as always I will keep you updated on that so I hope you enjoyed this video guys let me know how you prep your flower beds um, and whether you think it's the best way to be prepping your flower beds why you do what you do um, it will be interesting to see how how people do it differently 
and maybe we can get some tips and tricks off each other so thanks so much for watching guys if you liked it give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and if you would like to purchase a bottle of the goop then don't forget to check out the soil smiths in the link down below thanks guys and see you next time